summer Sunday afternoon with 12,000 people gather who love America, who want to see America be what it's capable of being. And only in Iowa could Senator Tom Harkin bring thousands of people who believe in the kind of America that all of us believe in, where everyone gets hope and opportunity. Tom, thank you for what you've done. Just on, I'll just add my voice to those who've already spoken, but I want to add something personal. The most important thing Tom Harkin represents to me is he has spent his entire life being the voice for the voiceless. And when our party walks away from the poor, the disabled, the disenfranchised, we lose our soul. Tom Harkin has never lost his soul. He understands what matters in the Democratic Party. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for what you've done. I also want to say, just give a quick shout out to my wife, Elizabeth, who's with me here today. She's doing great. She's going to make a great first lady. I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoyed it when she went after Ann Coulter. We have so much work to do. There's been a lot of talk about change already here this afternoon. We need change. We need change in the worst kind of way. But we need more than the rhetoric of change. We need real, meaningful, substantive change. We need... We need bold change and big ideas. My staff is out here today. For those of you who are interested, sign up. We'd love to hear what your ideas are for change in America. I don't claim to have all the ideas, but I do know this. The system in Washington, D.C. is rigged. It is broken. It does not work for ordinary Americans. Your voice is not being heard. If we want universal health care, there is no question why America doesn't have universal health care today. We don't have universal health care today because of drug companies, insurance companies, and their lobbyists in Washington, D.C. That's why we don't have universal health care. In my belief, we have wonderful people running for president, but I have a very strong view about this. I don't believe you can sit at a table with drug companies, insurance companies, and their lobbyists and negotiate an insurance plan for America. I don't believe you can give these people and their lobbyists a seat at the table because if you give them a seat at the table, they'll take all the food. There'll be nothing left for the rest of America. You can bring about the big change that America needs, the bold change that America needs, and defend the system in Washington. I don't believe you can bring about the change that America needs and defend big corporate interests in Washington and their lobbyists. We have to take these people on. We have to fight them. We have to stand up as together, as Americans, to bring about the change that's so desperately needed in this country. And it is not just health care. It's also the entire crisis of global warming. Why has America not addressed global warming in a serious way? There's a very simple answer for that. Oil companies, power companies, gas companies, and their lobbyists in Washington, D.C. I had, I had an experience a few weeks ago. I did a poverty tour. They began in the Ninth Ward of New Orleans. I ended up the last day in the Appalachian Mountains. That last morning, I was sitting at a picnic table with four or five people. One of those people was a man named James Lowe. He was 51 years old, three years younger than me. I'm 54. James told me the story of his life. He was born with a severe cleft palate. As a result, he couldn't talk. He didn't have health care, didn't have health care coverage. His condition was completely fixable. But he couldn't fix it because he had no health care. Finally, finally, somebody out of the goodness of their heart fixed James Lowe's cleft palate. And now he can talk. Here's the problem. They fixed it when he was 50 years old. 50 years old. 
James Lowe lived in the United States of America for 50 years, not able to speak because he had no health care coverage. Brothers and sisters, when are we finally going to stand up to drug companies, insurance companies, that are lobbyists in Washington who are keeping people like James Lowe from getting the health care that they deserve? That's what's at stake in this election. We have a battle on our hands. Lord knows we need a Democrat in the White House to replace George Bush. All of us believe in that. But that is not enough. It is not enough. I don't know about you, but I don't want to see us replace corporate Republicans with corporate Democrats. I actually want to restore the power in this democracy back to you. That's where the power should be. And what should we do about health care in America? We start with a very simple idea. We should have a law, a mandate, requiring that every single man, woman, and child in America is covered, period. Any presidential candidate, Democrat or Republican, who comes before you with a health care plan that doesn't require that every man and woman in America have health care, they should be asked to explain to you what man, what woman, what child in America is not worthy of health care? Because my belief is every man, woman, and child in America is worthy of health care, and there will be universal health care when I'm president of the United States. And not just the rhetoric of universal health care. I'm proud of the fact that months ago, I came out with a specific universal health care plan. We're going to ban, outlaw pre-existing conditions. We're going to have mental health parity. We're going to have preventive care, long-term care, chronic care, all covered. You can take your care, health care with you wherever you go. Beyond, oh, by the way, by the way, I'm also going to tell you the truth about how to pay for it. My plan is not cheap. I don't claim it is, and it's not free. It costs 90 to $120 billion a year, paid for by getting rid of Bush's tax cuts for people who make over $200,000. seven years of George Bush, aren't you ready for a little truth? Aren't you ready for a presidential candidate and a president that will actually tell the American people the truth? Well, it starts with telling the truth during the course of the campaign. We are faced with an enormous crisis in the world, and that crisis is global warming. We, here's what I believe. I believe America should cap carbon emissions, and we ought to bring that cap down every single year. We ought to reduce our carbon emissions by at least 80% by the year 2050. We ought to make polluters pay. We ought to make polluters pay. We ought to use that money to invest in wind, solar, cellulose based biofuels. And, and we ought to have a President of the United States who will say to America, it is time to be patriotic about something other than war. It is time. It is time for us to sacrifice. If you love America, if you want to make America bigger and stronger, we're going to have to do this together. This presidential candidates come rolling through Iowa every four years, promising you this, promising you that. The idea that any one of us alone can bring about this change is a fantasy. It is not the truth. We need you to bring about the change. All these issues, America needs you. We need you involved. We need you taking responsibility. We have the worst economic disparity we've had in America since the Great Depression. We're becoming a country made up of a few rich people and everybody else. That is not the America I want to live in. It's not the America that you want to live in. We're better than that. The United States of America is better than that. And there are so many simple